Hello and good afternoon to all. Um, I would like to um, welcome all of you. Uh, just let me uh, unmute uh, the translator. Uh -huh. Jerry, can you confirm that you, um, okay, it looks like you're good. Okay, <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. Uh, today we're going to be covering the introduction of 3x3 basketball and along with the introduction of the 3x3 e-learning platform. Originally, um, we wanted, I scheduled this as a four part series, uh, but after uh, working with uh, the regional office and headquarters, um, we felt um, we had kind of normalized some of this data and put it into a new um, self-paced um, learning where you will be able to um, learn at your speed instead of trying to cram everything into four one and a half hour sessions. And we think that this would have uh, been able to give you the opportunity to uh, learn a lot of the content at your will and you will be able to um, successfully pass the exam um, in the first um, instance. Um, with that saying, um, I would like to uh, welcome our um, interpreter, um, Mr. Jerry. Um, for those in, who have tuned in to the um, interpret button, you have an option to listen in either English or Spanish uh, throughout the content of this. Uh, due to give, giving our interpreter um, an opportunity to catch up with um, the translation, we are going to take a break um, midway so that at least he can catch his breath and uh, probably get a sip because I know he'll be doing um, a lot of back and forth between English and Spanish and Spanish and English. Uh, with that saying, I would like to uh, jump straight into 3x3 basketball. I would like someone to uh, give me a confirmation whether you can um, see my screen or not. Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. 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 Okay. I am going to put this in. Okay, now I am um, in the, again, welcome. This is the FIBA 3x3 e-learning workshop. Um, it is um, just for today. We are going to record this session so that you can play back on demand at your leisure. Uh, today, this, um, this webinar is brought to you by Constant Capo, which is the Confederation of Central America and Caribbean Basketball. I will be your presenter today. My name is Patrick Haynes and I am from Guyana. Just before we get in, I'd just like to just tell you, share a little bit about myself to you. Um, again, I'm from Guyana. I'm currently the Secretary General for the Guyana Basketball Federation, also the Secretary for CONCENCABA, the Central America and Caribbean Basketball Confederation. I am also um, an active 3x3 uh, commission member for FIBA, and also um, a recertified technical delegate. Um, I'm both a certified um, 3x3 organizer, and I have taken this e-learning um, platform class, I think about three times. So I'm well versed in that. <coughs> Pardon me. A little bit on my, my personal side, I am a graduate from NYU, um, Tandem School of Engineering, um, both in my undergrad in aeronautical engineering and my, uh, my master's in information systems engineer. So by trade, I am um, I'm an engineer. Um, I love it. 
Um, my, my favorite basketball team is the San Antonio Spurs. My uh, favorite uh, soccer team is um, Liverpool. Um, when I'm not into sports, um, my hobbies is um, I like road cycling and mountain biking um, with my son. Uh, so today, what we'll be covering, it's the uh, introduction of 3x3 basketball, the introduction of the the new e-learning platform, uh, the benefits for national member federations and promoters to be e-learning certified, um, how to access these, these uh, platforms. So we have the e-learning platform. Um, there is the online event manager and the 3x3 backend. And also I'll provide a little um, update on the 3x3 governance. Um, this will now um, take me into the segue. Um, it's a short clip on 3x3 basketball. Please do enjoy. We can play anywhere. We can play on top of a building, we can play on the beach, we can play on the park. Basically a 10 minute sprint. Three on three played in this fashion is incredibly exciting. Look at this terrific crowd. It's a very intimate setting. You're right up on the court. The games are short, highly competitive. I, I just think it's fantastic. like a very exciting game. It will be fun to watch the game going to the Olympics. I will buy a ticket for it. Okay, um, that was a summation of 3x3 basketball. Um, as you see, um, basketball will be earning another six medals at the Olympics, um, which was uh, postponed due to the current uh, pandemic we're in. Uh, with that, right into it, it's um, the vision. What FIBA had, the vision was 3x3, is considered the number one urban sport. And when I said number one, this is uh, in comparison to um, the shorter version of football for futsal and beach volleyball for uh, volleyball and uh, 2020 for cricket. So um, we recently did a study uh, both on the digital platforms and um, the content that was out there and um, 
uh, three extreme is ranked number one. Um, and this was independent study that was done by a firm out in Switzerland. Uh, from the first official event at the 2010 Youth Olympics, FIBA has had an ambition, ambitious uh, vision for this game. So it is, you know, from that one um, activation, it just keep growing and growing and growing. And uh, most of you who may know that um, the late uh, Patrick Bowman, this was one of his passions. He spent about 15% of his time driving this to get it to the Olympics. Uh, Universal, uh, 3x3 is simple and flexible enough to be played anywhere by anyone. All you need is one hoop, a half court, and six players. Um, and a lot of this we'll, um, we'll learn a little bit on the rules side uh, when I show you a short video about that. Um, events can be staged anywhere, indoors or outdoors. Um, ideally, the whole 3x3 culture is about taking the game to the people, not bringing the people to the game. So like traditional uh, basketball, everyone goes to um, the Mecca facility center and they watch a game. 3x3 is not about that. 3x3 is taking the game to the people, going to, into the communities, going to the popular foot traffic areas and set up a court there. You see we've done it in malls. We've done it in um, monument areas. Um, you know, this is the areas that we're looking to, track, to attract because this is where they have the most foot traffic and this is where we have more spread of the sport. Um, entertaining. Uh, the words are very simple and designed to make it um, a fast, spectacular, and exciting game. So it's, you know, it's a short version game. It's um, nonstop music. We try to bring that authentic urban culture. Um, it's where we interact both um, entertainment, um, local culture, to engage younger audience. So it's not just about one specific dynamic. We're looking to cover um, all age groups from the young to the old and in between. On the professional side, 3x3 um, is an opportunity for new players, organizers, and countries to go from the streets to Olympics. Um, what does this mean? It means that uh, you may not have an opportunity to play on a national team. Um, can someone please mute, mute their mic? Whoever is uh, kind of like breathing hard. Um, so it's, you know, you still have that opportunity if you're not able to make a full 12-man uh, roster. 3x3 is a, a shorter version that you still have that opportunity. So it's where it's giving um, street ballers that opportunity that they can excel on the highest level. The stars of the game uh, play in a professional tour and some in most prestigious uh, multi-sport events. And some of them um, can be as as we're coming up shortly to see, uh, we've we've had three x three um, activations at the CAC Games, University Games, in the South American Games. Um, coming next year, we will be activating it in the inaugural Caribbean Games uh, twenty twenty one, which will be held in Guadeloupe. Um, so this is a, another opportunity for uh, both Caribbean and Central American. Um, teams have an opportunity, again, to uh, have their um, youngsters play in this uh, exciting um, opportunity. I'm just going to uh, run you through a short vis uh, video of the rules of 3x3. Welcome to the world of 3x3, baby. It's an exciting new brand of basketball. You got two teams of three players on the court. You got one player sitting on the bench here with me. <laughs> Playing on the half court with one rim. With the official 3x3 basketball made especially for the fast pace. Okay. First team to 21 points is your winner or the team with the most points after 10 minutes. Yeah, just like the shot clock. And the clock is ticking, baby. Anything inside the arc is worth one point, while anything outside the arc is worth two. Woo! That's how I do, baby. And once you score, the ball doesn't stop. Offense turns to defense just like that.
It's a 10 minute sprint. Uh, that was the rules in a um, in a nutshell. Um, really nice uh, we had put the rules together. Uh, we were working on a subsequent uh, session that will be breaking down the rules um, specifically. Um, whoever has that echo, could you please mute your mic? Thank you. Um, a little bit of how we get to this point. Um, and this, this, you know, just gives us the major milestones of 3x3 three three, uh, basketball. Um, in 2010, we had the first um, event, and this was the inclusion and a success story for 3x3 three three at the 2010 Youth Olympics in Singapore. Um, a year later, the first national team 3x3 three three event was held, and this was the 3x3 uh, three three World Cup for U18 um, boys and girls, and this was held in um, Italy, the Italian seaside resort of Rimini, um, and that was an exciting event. Um, later, um, in the next, the following year, we had a professional tour. This is where um, FIBA had launched the 3x3 World Tour, where teams had competed for cash prizes. Um, today, that cash prize has gone up as much as $2 million, winner takes all. Um, and as I've mentioned in the opening video, in 2017, um, on June 9, 2017, 3 x was added to the Olympic program. And this will begin, the act first activation will be at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Uh, 3X3. Uh, 3X, uh, 3X3 is 70% sport, 30% um, entertainment. And when I say that, it's we try to include the the culture, um, sport, music, um, all of the different um, ambiences to make it a fun event. It's not just you just coming and supporting one team. You do it for one team or another. Three X Three is an event where we like to activate our fans, make them part of the event. Um, and this is where you know we will have uh, kids coming out uh, shooting free throw shots or uh, our sponsors giving opportunities for fans to get a part of the game, they can win prizes. Um, there's a lot of dancing, cheerleaders, we've had um, local talent, either, um, either the type of uh, rap, urban music. Um, we've had uh, celebrities, um, even NBA superstars that came and, and, and graced their presence on a number of events. I've had an opportunity to went to um, one of the events in Los Angeles and one in New York, and you know it was fantastic. We had a lot of uh, NBA players came out. We had Kevin Garnett came out, sit in the booth, and was broadcasting. It's who it was. It was a really um, good um, culture, and you know everyone had buy-in. They wanted to be part of the event, not just there to support a team. I'm just going to run you to um, one of the activations. Go. Hey. Oh. Make what you want, take what you want, hey. Take what you want, say what you want to say. Just another day, another day to decide if this the game you want to play, want to play. Make what you want, take what you want to A. Take what you want, say what you want to say. Just another day, another day to decide if this the game you want to play, want to play. Magnificent rap, different day. Act timid while black, living and say. Keep up with a style they never had. Don't mean to brag, I bring it back with pen and pad. All aboard, who's ready to ride with them. Whole sea of greatness, ready to dive in it. Arrive in it, his time to arrive, only time will tell. I will get it, sky's the limit. Time flies 100 miles a minute, no looking back. This how you build, you a brick, we couldn't stack. I put it back, not any track, I wouldn't lap. Not a goal with any flow, I couldn't catch. Lean up, beam up, no sudden death, we showing your team up. 
back with the re-ups. It's the real dirt, dirt, never could clean up. Uh, make what you want, take what you want, ayy. Take what you want, say what you want to say. Just another day, another day to decide if this the game you want to play, want to play. Make what you want, take what you want to, ayy. Take what you want, say what you want to say. Just another day, another day to decide if this the game you want to play, want to play. Yeah, spit it into the tape clip. Get a grip, we lift up, no spaceship. A part of me, keep rhymes in harmony like take six with lines you can't fix. Face first, this verse give you a facelift. It's an art when I start to paint drips from a cam that you ask and I got the answers. The only one to give it, I only spit it with passion. Make what you want, take what you want, ayy. Take what you want, say what you want to say. Just another day, another day to decide if this the game you want to play, want to play. Make what you want, take what you want to, ayy. Take what you want, say what you want to say. Just another day, another day to decide if this the game you want to play, want to play. play. Okay, uh, moving into the benefits for National Federation. A major incentive for National Federations is that being 3x3 e-learning certified at the cutoff date is an eligible, eligibility criteria to participate in any FIBA 3x3 national team event. Um, what does this mean? It means that uh, the cutoff date, which is November 1st, is that you have, um, and I just don't, I don't want to start giving away some of the answers, um, but there are th certain things that you need to meet um, between that, be before that date within that cycle. And one of the things is that you need, in your country, is that you need to organize at least three um, endorsed FIBA e events. Um, like for some of the players, I think they have to play in at least nine events or, so there's, and you learn a lot about this in the interactive course that um, I'll show you that we'll get into. So these are some of the, the criteria, and these are some of the exam questions that will come. It's um, what is the eligibility criteria for a national federation to participate in a FIBA national team event. National team event speaks to all of the regular applicable rules for a regular basketball game um, compared to a world tour or a challenge or something like that. Um, that would not um, be applicable to a national team event. Um, what I'm going to show you now, it's uh, the National Federation's role in 3x3. Smack it up, you're in tune to the boys with the funky cuts. Body deep or are you with me? Say, can you feel me? Do you ever get the feeling that today may be the very last time that you get a chance to speak your mind? You can say what you want to, you can be who you gotta be, do what you gotta do. do. Yeah. 
smack it up. Yo, in tune to the man with the funky stuff. Body people, are you with me? Say, can you feel me? Do you ever get the feeling that today may be the very last time that you get a chance to free your This is the main soul of basketball. Uh, everybody, you know, can uh, play it, can watch it, can enjoy it. With uh, music, with music is very close to, to our sport. So it's a party for our sport. So now I'm going to cover the keys to the keys to uh, National Federation success. Uh, the first thing is that um, you need to be registered at the and get your play credentials, which is uh, at play.fiba3x3.com. Um, get e-learning e certified. This is um, what I'm taking you through now. Um, the third thing would be to update the online information on the back end and create your, your reports frequently. Second thing is to attend as many um, seminars or webinars, um, either um, as scheduled, in person, or on demand. And these are things that you, you know, should stay active in getting. Um, have a dedicated 3x3 coordinator for your country. Um, and I also have a supporting staff because I know um, some countries have uh, the population is too much for just one person to manage. And if you if you can break this up by regions or zones or um, parishes or what's not, um, you will be able to divide and conquer in terms of getting 3x3 into the communities um, much faster than the current rate that you're going. And third is to get familiar with the website, uh, which brings us into the hub. The FIBA 3x3 hub, which is FIBA3x3.com. Uh, this provides important information, guides, and references to assist national federations, organizers, players, and stakeholders about 3x3. Um, everything required to plan, organize, and participate in a 3x3 is available um, on the hub. So if you go to FIBA3x3.com, you have all of the information there. There are tons of uh, downloads that you can um, download, how to organize, how to plan, how to manage, how to execute, write your reports. Um, there's a lot of content out there that you can use. Um, I want to speak about the social responsibility part of uh, uh, 3x3, how that uh, can be applied into one year national federation and also your sponsor is using um, 3x3 activation as a social responsibility project. Um, I would say four years ago, we started this project with um, the IBF, the International Basketball uh, Foundation. And it's where we targeted um, islands in the Lesser Antilles who had a population of about 150,000 or less. And what we did, but we kind of like increased that scope because we wanted to include uh, more of the islands that who were central, centrally located uh, within the Lesser Antilles, and that is from the British Virgin Islands all the way down to um, Barbados and Trinidad. But then we had included some of the southern countries, which included Aruba, uh, Curacao, uh, Guyana, and uh, Suriname. Um, you know, the initial concept we had about 20 countries, and then um, it all. Um, uh, you know, accumulated to a 3x3 hoops finals, um, which led in, which was held in uh, Saint Lucia, and then subsequent years we had one um, in 2018 in Guyana, and then uh, later this year, um, earlier this year I should say, we had a tall, the third installment, which was in Guadeloupe, and I think uh, some of you on the uh, the call was part of that, um, and this is the message that we're trying to keep you involved, keep you up to date with the current content um, so that you can be ambassadors of 3x3 in your communities, your countries, and eventually um, in the region. Uh, so this project was called Antilles uh, IBF 3x3 Hoop. Um, it is where um, national federations and some non-national federations, because we did invite some countries who were not members of FIBA, they were actually overseas departments of uh, other countries in like France and the Netherlands and the UK. 
So we still included them because uh, we wanted to give them an opportunity to play basketball. And I think 3x3 basketball was a good platform to get them involved in. So this is how we use 3x3 part of the corporate uh, responsibility. Uh, part of the, the corporate responsibility, um, what we target on is using the, the United Nations um, Sustainable um, Act, which uh, covers, I think, 17 different goals. Um, specifically for this project, these were the goals that we addressed within the, U the UN um, Sustainability Development Goals. Um, and this is something that you can read. You can read more about this um, sustainability goals if you go to, um, and I'll put a link in the chat. Um, this is the, uh, what is it, un.org, sustainable, sustainable Development. Um, and you can see everything that how you can use those specific uh, programs to activate um, 3x3 as part of a corporate social responsibility. Um, this was just some of the testimonies that I, I had given um, based on the events. Um, but you can read about this on the um, FIBA Foundation website. Um, and what specifically I said is that sports has the power to unite our communities, both International Basketball Foundation and the Caribbean Basketball um, Confederation are dedicated and committed to developing and promoting the game of basketball to bring people together to unite our communities and make basketball the most popular sport in our community. This specifically, um, it was a quote, um, the first part, um, sport has the power to unite our communities is something that um, I take away from Nelson Mandela. Um, in one of, one, one of his speeches, he had said that, and I truly believe sport has the power to unite us. Um, one, of, um, one of the other testimonies is we had from a player from Trinidad and Tobago. And um, you know, he was pretty much, um, I guess, um, shocked in terms of the reach of, of, uh, of 3x3. It's something that um, you know, he went through the whole process of being qualified in Trinidad before he can get to this event. And he, you know, he was he was really impressed on the culture of it, and you know, so we wanted to um, include one of his um, his comment his comments. Um, with that, um, I'm going to run you through um, a summation of this project, and then we'll take a quick break for um, the translator to uh, to catch his breath and get a, a sip of water. <laughs> My name is Louis Fernandez. My name is Francis Bridgewater from Trinidad and Tobago. And this, of course, is Joshua Bridgewater from Trinidad and Tobago. That's my last son, Joshua. <laughs> I'm exceptionally proud of it. I never pushed him into basketball. He decided on his own a couple of years ago, at the age of 15, he wanted to start playing. I wanted one day to play in the NBA. But I think he can do it. <laughs> so I'm hoping that one day he'll reach that far. You can get it if you really want, but you must try. I learned a lot during the last few days, especially um to interact with different people and stuff like that. Um I learned a little bit of French from the the Guadalupe, Guadalupe people, um, a little bit of Spanish and mixed from the Curacao. Rome was not built in a day. Everyone should take a lot from the leadership program, where we learn um, different things. I actually learn from different countries, uh, different problems that they may face in their country, and how we could give back and help. Every morning we were doing a workshop, which was very, very, very 
good for us and good for everybody, uh, I think. Slowly, slowly. There we go. There we go. Nice. No, it's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> In the workshops, I mostly learn how to make new friendships and experience not only winning, that winning is not only important, but also important, and how to share my leadership around with other countries. It's been a leadership workshop teaching kids how to be better leaders, get back to their communities, or how they can better their communities, and it's very interactive and it's a good thing. And I mean, it's going on right now, it's not in the right experience. You can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want. But you must try, try and try, try and try. Succeed at last. Team work, I'm more for I'm this game. We um, evaluate the players and them too. We know what to do and what not to do. So, all the players, I know what they had to do and what not to do. Although we had plenty of fouls, the game was better than the rest. I have been playing from like two years. C'est ma vie. Basketball for good. 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 Uh, with that, we are going to uh, just take a quick break for. Uh, our um, interpreter to um, get a sip of water and be right back in three minutes. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh.
in the next section, we'll get straight into the introduction of 3x3 e-learning platform. Okay, I am ready to start back. Uh, can someone confirm? Yes. Thanks. Uh, Jerry, um, are you back? Uh, someone in... Uh, the Spanish language, can you give me a thumbs up or some indication in the chat that uh, we're ready? Sí, se escucha. Thank you. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. This is uh, what we're getting into now. It's the introduction to the 3x3 e-learning platform. Uh, this program is designed to provide an important ste stepping stone to national federations and 3x3 organizers to further improve their knowledge to the and to develop 3x3 as a whole. What the course does, it brings together the various components of 3x3 to explain the use nomenclature, uh, the rules of the game, the competition structure, player rankings, and 
the digital platforms required to organize, manage, and participate in this fast rising discipline. Uh, to sign up, um, and this was a communication that was sent from World Headquarters to the National Federations. Um, so, um, you would have to contact your national federation about this communication, but I'm giving it to you now. Is to sign up for this platform to get access. You would go to https colon slash slash learning dot three dot com slash sign up. And what that does, it allows you to sign up for the education part of it. Uh, once you have received your communication, to log into the platform to actually report you to um, go to uh, the e-learning platform which would be um, learning.fever3x3.com for national federations how you get access is that all backend users can log in directly using their same credentials as their Play credentials. The play, play credentials, I'm going to refer to play credentials. It's your play.fever3x3.com login. So if you go to play.3x3.com, uh, you'll be able to create a profile within the 3x3 platform. And then from there, you'll be able to gain access to the back end and the event maker. Um, one of these things is that. I think I may cover it a little later. Is the back end? The back end is only for the National Federation. And that means that someone who has been certified and passed the exam, and your federation has authorized that person to have access to the back end, this is where you will get that. Authors and organizers do not have access to the back the back end, and we like to keep that specifically for the National Federation. But this is where they will use uh, this for their. Um, their platform for selecting national teams. Um, this setup um, will help um, automatically. Uh, someone who is who's have that heavy uh, noise in the background, can you please go on mute? Thank you. Um, this process will once once you're in, um, you will be able to um, the content and also to. Uh, to take that exam. Uh, that final exam is also being checked on, on the platform to make sure that that person has the specific um, co credentials that to get back to access. Uh, I'm just going to take a, a short break here so I can mute that person. Okay, thank you. Um, any other members of the Nash of your organization, they can undertake or, or view or take this course. Um, they just simply need to request access and we will be able to give them access to take this course so that they understand all of the terminology, um, the requirements, rules, anything specific, um, how to use our branding information, all of that is part of this course. <clears throat> uh, once you have requested this course, what you will do is um, you will receive email communication and the FIBA 3x3, um, they will respond confirming your your request within 24 hours. And this is except weekends and holidays. So um, the turnaround time is pretty quickly because we're looking to get as many people um, certified in the platform, using the platform, understanding the language, understanding what is used, how to activate, um, and how to get the games playing. Um, a national federation would only be considered e-learning certified if the program has been completed by someone with the backend access. 
so that it's not just completed, but completed and passed the exam. So the National Federation has to, if they have appointed, um, I'm just going to use, if, if, if the Guyana Federation has appointed me back in access, the Federation would only be considered as a certified Federation if I have taken the course and have passed the exam. So it is important that national federations who they are selecting, um, they ensure that that person has either taken the exam or will be shortly taking the exam and passing it before that federation can be deemed um, eligible. Some federations might say, yeah, well, we have someone who is already taking the exam, but guess what? FIBA doesn't know that that person is designated as the back end access person. So your federation would not be tracked as being certified. So that's one of the things that national federation coordinators and their um, executive need to follow up on and make sure that is in place. Um, for the FIBA 3X3 learning portal, um, you might say, um, I don't have um, access. Well, now would be a good, good opportunity for you to go and register. So you can log into um, your play.fever3x3.com credentials and request access. If you don't have those credentials, well, then you can now register to get um, access. Once you have access, then you can now request access to the platform. So the first step is um, registering on play.3x3.com if you have not already. Once you're in that system and you have verified and confirm your profile, then you'll be able to request access to the learning uh, platform. So there are two different um, platforms. For private organizers and promoters, um, we'll still have to request um, to the e-learning platform and they can use the same link as um, learning.fever3x3.com slash sign up. So it's the same link for both federations and promoters and organizers, uh, private organizers. All you need is your play credentials. And I mentioned what the play credentials um, are earlier. And FIBA uh, 3X3 system would automatically grant you access. So how do I sign up? <clears throat> the process is that you go to uh, learning.fever3x3.com slash sign up and you're presented with a screen like this and it asks you for your username and a password and if you know there it says you can log in here using your play.fever3x3.com credentials um, if you don't remember it if you know you have one and you don't remember you can hit the forget password and it will be able to uh, send you um, uh, password instructions to the email that you use um, and note, it says below, it says, don't have a profile yet? Register first on play.fever3x3.com. So this is, if you don't have access, you can now register to get access. Once you have registered, you will have a confirmation pop-up that says, click here to confirm you want to send an e-learning access request. And by clicking there, that now sends to the FIBA headquarters. They will review your request and they will now um, send you back a message saying that, well done, your request has been sent. Once the back end um, process has been com completed, you will receive an email like this and it will have hi, whatever is your name, and just FIBA has granted you now access to the FIBA e learning platform. Feel free to log in and give you specific. URL for you to log in to use um, the e-learning platform using your play credentials. Once you're in the, the platform now, you would go to the learningcenter.fiba.com and now it would ask you to log in your username and a password. And this is your, your uh, play credentials. If you notice um, to the top, we would have a language so now you can choose the language, um, whether it's English or whether it's Spanish, you would like to take the course in. <clears throat> um, 
I think we also have, will be coming out with um, different versions of Arabic, Chinese, French, Portuguese, and Russian are some of the other languages. We do have some other languages here, um, but this is for some other content that is already on the Learning Center that you would not be, have access or you may not have access to. Once you're in, you would accept the privacy policy. So it's to read it, um, check the box that you accept the terms of the privacy policy, click the, the green I agree, and you'll be taken to the next step. Um, it will ask you to read the terms and conditions of using the platform. If you notice I highlighted here, there's an Espanol version that you can read um, in detail what are the terms and con conditions of the platform. Uh, once you have agreed, you would uh, click I agree with Fever Information Systems um, and then click the green I agree and this will now give you direct access. Once you're in there, this is what the first thing you presented. If you have not used the FIBA um, Learning Center for any other modules, and this is it's a general platform that we have for other things, um, whether it's uh, for technical delegates, uh, for um, table officials, for communications, marketing. There's a lot of content out there, but you're you are requesting access specifically to FIBA 3x3 e-learning. This e-learning, once you're here, you can see some recap of videos, some of the content um, you have seen before. But you're interested in this, um, this section here. Uh, the first, I see two tiles to your, to your left. Um, so the first thing you want to do is to, uh, if you click on, so I'm just, just going to go back. If you click on the, FIBA e-learning, and it will tell you there's 11 courses here within this module. Um, you will have a dashboard view of the plan. And if you look here, the plan takes you through 10 modules here. These 10 modules, you would have to complete all of them before the exam can open. And if you notice the exam has a padlock, that means it's locked until all of these uh, 10 are completed. Going through each of these modules, you'll be asked a series of knowledge check questions that just help you um, check your knowledge to see if you understand the content that you have read or any of the videos or scenarios that they have walked you through so that you are prepared going into this exam. Uh, so once you're in there, the first thing you would like to do is to click on get certified now and part of that you click on start learning and the first module opens up and you'll be able to start going through that uh, check process it gives you a percentage now to um, allow you to know where you are or how much more it, that is needed to uh, complete that specific module and it will give you you know that dashboard view of all of the modules um, that you have completed or what you have. And this is where that interactive part is that you can self-pace. How fast do you want to get this accomplished or how slow do you want to get this accomplished? Um, I see um, someone has um, their hand raised. Hi, my name is Gabriela. I'm from El Salvador. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I just wanted to ask you, in any case, we've done the e-learning already. Do we have to do it again through this new platform? Because we did it when we had the older version before. Um, so the question is a two part, um, depending when you have done it, uh, because your license will, um, will expire. And uh, we will not be using the older platform. Everything now has to come through this platform. So that's why I recommend people, even if you have done it, um, because I think I, I have recertified last, I think last October, and um, I still went back and re redid mine so that I'm current um, and the certificate looks completely different from what the previous one does. Okay. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. We actually done it um, 
I got it in May, I believe, May this year. Okay, yeah, the um, the new platform started in, I think, July. Okay, um, what is covered? Um, I'm just going to go through, July, quickly, yeah. go, quickly go through the, uh, the learning plan. Um, I know I have two hands raised, so I'll get to you shortly. Uh, module one covers the introduction of trajectory basketball. Number module two is the rules of the game. Three covers the regulatory principles. Four will be the rankings, and you can see the subsections within. Uh, five would cover the competition system. Six would be the digital uh, platforms. Uh, seven would be the National Health Federation's role. Eight would be national team competitions. Nine would be the world tour. And 10 would be the branding elements of it. Um, I'm going to take someone who just rose their hand. If you have a question, you can please uh, bring it to the forum. OK, I'm going to move on. Patrick, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Go ahead. Yeah, so the the e learning through the yeah, Patrick, um I said well here, the e learning through the FIBA Academy um dot org site. Um that one you will not FIBA will not be using that one anymore. They they're using the newer version, you said? That is correct. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, the exam, the exam consists of 33 multiple, part, multiple choice questions. You will be awarded three points for a correct answer and you will lose one point for an incorrect answer. Um, if you select I don't know as one of your options, you will receive a zero score for that question. So sometimes it's, it is better to, um, to get a zero than to get a negative one. So I would, I would always urge you to read the question in its entirety before selecting your answer. Um, you know, I always aim for get the three, get the three points so that um, you can get a higher score. To pass this exam, you're required a score of 80% or greater. Um, um, answers will only be shown once you have passed the exam. Um, the beauty about this is if you fail this exam, you can retake it. Um, so it's not, um, and you can t retake it right away. In the previous platform, I think you had to wait between seven and 14 days before you were allowed to retake the exam. Um, and specifically, it's for you to go and reread all of the content uh, to make sure that you understand it and it didn't give you that opportunity to instantly retake it. In this platform, you have that opportunity to retake it immediately if you have failed the exam. Um, as mentioned before, this exam will um, would not um, activate until you have completed all 10 modules. So if you feel you have a good knowledge of it and you just want to go and take the exam right away, it will not allow you. You have to go through the course to get it. Uh, this is the image of what the new certificate will look like. This is what the new certificate will look like before the one it was, um, I think it was white and orange. So this is what it would look like um, once you have successfully completed the exam. The requirements, um, you know, Taking an online training you know, presents many exciting opportunities, such as learning from the comfort of your home, your office, your car, wherever. However, it may present um, unique technical challenges. Um, so we recommend that all participants, they are responsible for their own technology. Um, you should be computer literate and you should always have internet access and experience with um, setting up um, either access on your phone, your mobile, tablet or what's not. Um, what is required, you'll need a, a laptop, tablet, or a smartphone with internet access to uh, complete this course. 
uh, we also offer a mobile version through um, either the Apple Store or Google Play. You can download the Go.Learn app and uh, you can use the specific uh, URL, which would be learningcenter.fever.com slash 3x3. And that will take you into this module once you, and again, you will need your, your play credentials to log in. So you can use the mobile app instead of um, uh, an internet browser for this program. I'm going to touch on two other parts, which was the event center. And Does someone have a question? If I knew, I would have done it. Mommy, I'm so sorry, it's not Jack. Uh, can someone please uh, mute your mic? Whoever is asking for the Jack. Or the TV, so. <clears throat> uh, so TV. for the um event maker. Have a Jack like that somewhere. Jack in the draw here or in the. So okay. The uh, FIBA 3x3 provides all three x3 organizers free tools to create, manage, and promote their events. Whether you want to set up a small 3x3 event at the or to host the World Cup, all of that information is there. And if you use the event maker to um, to get this. Uh, the website to get into this is very distracting. Okay, um, sorry about that. Um, I hope uh, Jerry can still um, translate if you can still hear. Hey. Okay, uh, for any tech support, um, you can go to uh, help.fiba3x3.com um, and I, this is EN support. Um, EN refers to English. If it was Spanish, um, you can um, you can put ES support at home and you will be able to see that in her language. Uh, the 3x3 event maker, um, this is the website you will go to. It is em.fiba. Uh, you can go to uh, em.fiba3x3.com, put use your play credentials, and you'll be able to enter the event maker um, platform, which is different from the e-learning. Uh, speak a little bit about the back end. The back end is an online interface for national federations which allows them to have an overview of all of the 3x3 activities in their territory or their country. They will be able to see registered and eligible nationals with confirmed FIBA 3x3 accounts. So it's not just um, have an account, but your account needs to be confirmed. Um, they can find out how they will uh, do this in the, the 3x3 federation ranking. Um, and they will learn what their qualification status for national team FIBA 3x3 official competitions. So this is where the person with the back end, they would have access to all of the potential national team players, um, not specifically um, uh, world, world Tour or any of the other local events, but this is specifically dealing with national team players. As mentioned before, uh, the access is limited to assigned uh, people or persons. Um, 
if you should have access but you do not this is something that you would have to contact your local national uh, 3x3 coordinator and they'll be able, able to um, either direct you to give you access to the back end um, once they request it FIBA would assign that person access to the back end to go to the back end you would log into backend.fever3x3.com. You would use your play credentials and you will be able to access the backend. Um, and that pretty much covers all of the portals or platforms that you need to get in uh, for the system. Um, I'm just going to speak now a little bit about the governance of 3x3. Uh, FIBA is recognized as the sole competent authority in basketball by the IOC. In this capacity, FIBA provides 3x3 with a regulatory frame. Uh, why I'm coming into this now is that um, far too many times we ask, we, the question is asked, who, um, who has authority over 3x3 in your country? Uh, sometimes we have federations that do little or no work and the promoters or private organizers do all or a lot of the work pushing it and we like that um, we would never stop them uh, because they are spreading the footprint of the sport um, but ultimately it is the federation's responsibility to inform us on whether a promoter um, is not complying with um, the regulations um, that they have agreed to uh, because you know you are the eyes and ears for FIBA in your country, so you will have to be able to let us know if um, a promoter or an organizer is um, has unethical um, practices or um, their practices are not in compliance with FIBA standards. So it's not the private promoter does not control the sport; they are there to promote the sport. Um, the National Federation is ultimately responsible for 3x3 in that territory. Uh, some of the key regulatory principles are the official 3x3 rules of the game, the 3x3 competition network, uh, the qualification process to 3x3 official competitions, and the 3x3 official competition specific regulations. FIBO uh, manages all of that. And all of this content is out on the 3x3 hub that you can read um, in whatever language, and both English and Spanish, and also share this with um, your, your stakeholders. Um, what we have done, um, all of the FIBO endorsed 3x3 events are subject um, insofar applicable to the uh, provisions contained in FIBA statutes, internal, regula internal regulations, and specific rules and decisions taken by FIBA for 3x3. Uh, any breaches of this may lead to sanctions. Um, specifically, um, I was part of the, um, the FIBA Governance Commission. Uh, we have since um, disbanded that commission, and we have, uh, because a lot of the, that work we have now moved to the legal commission and we have now uh, created a 3x3 commission and one of the things that uh, because of the the growth of the sport it we felt it necessary that we introduced another internal regulations and this is where we have book six and book six specifically speaks to 3x3 i encourage you to read book six in its entirety so that you understand all of the internal regulations that govern 3x3 basketball. And you can find this download um, both in the learning platform when you go through, I think it's in one of the modules, and um, also on the 3x3 hub through FIBA. I'm sorry, FIBA3x3.com. You will be able to download that and read that in whatever language you would like. Um, for governance, um, as I mentioned, um, we have this year, we have created a, a new governance commission for 3x3. It comprises of 18 members from all of the different um, zones in the world. Um, it is headed by um, 
The chairman is um, Andreas Karolinko from Russia, and the deputy chair is Ambrose Deshoba from Uganda. Um, of the 18 members, um, there are three members that are representing the Americas, um, which is Michael Linklater from Canada, uh, myself, and uh, Jay Demings from the USA. So those are the three representatives from the Americas um, who are on that commission to provide information and knowledge to the Secretary General. Um, this here ends um, the session. Um, I hope you have attained knowledge now to prepare and equip you to one, um, understand 3x3, um, what it is about, how to use it, and also the importance for national federations and 3x3 organizers um, to get e-learning certified so that you can be in compliance and you understand how to promote the sport, how to um, to to activate um, any um, any acti activities, um, how to use 3x3 as part of the corporate social responsibility. Um, and by doing this, we will be able to increase the footprint of 3x3 throughout our region. Uh, one of the goals is to have all 31 member federations within Concentcaba, which is the uh, Central America and the Caribbean, to be 100% compliant uh, going into <clears throat> next year's um, Consent Cabo Annual General Assembly. Uh, the previous one, we think we had 12 nations that were certified. My goal is to have all 31 coming into next February. If you have specific questions on how to, uh, to use the platform, how to get information, um, please reach out to me or reach out to your National Federation 3X3 coordinator. And they'll be able to ex, um, they'll be able to escalate your question or concern so that you can um, receive um, the proper answers or information <laughs> to get you um, in a good position. With that saying, I'm now going to open the floor for questions. Okay, so it looks like we have a shy bunch, but I'm just going to uh, jump into the chat here and look at some. So we have um, a representative from, um, from Haiti was asking, what happened when you log in and you ask, you ask for a voucher? So there's no more voucher systems because we're now using this platform. Once you have access um, and you have completed the 10 modules, it will take the, the exam would automatically open up for you to now take the exam. Um, any other questions? Uh, Jerry, do we have any questions uh, from our Espanol uh, friends. Hi, Patrick. This is Hercules from Guyana. Hi, Hercules. How are you doing? I'm fine. I have a question. Um, one of the concerns coming out of the last 3x3 Lesser Antony's um, that was held in uh, Guadeloupe was, is the Caribbean by Caribbean, I meant uh, the Caribbean Confederation hosting any 3x3 tournament specific to that region that we can look forward to as, as a group in? Or are we exclusively leaving um, the private promoters to sort of organize themselves and maybe have a tournament escalate to the level of um, what we would have put as 
a Caribbean 3x3, regardless if it's at a junior level or maybe the senior level? Is there anything in the work? So yes, um, from, a, from a constant capital um, perspective, um, we are planning a series of events um, specific to Central America and the Caribbean. Um, but um, we're also encouraging those sub-sub zones, both COCAVA and CBC, to execute their, 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 their events so that it will lead in to um, the larger event, which plays into the, uh, the America's 3x3 Cup, which will be coming down um, sometime in the future. But yes, it is the responsibility of one, the national federations, and it's the sub sub zones that those federations are assigned to, which will be COCABA for Central America and CBC for Caribbean to execute those events. But speaking from a sub zones um, perspective of CONCACAFA, yes, we have already identified a number of events that we will be ho hosting um, in the near future. Um, I'm just going to jump straight into the chat. I'm seeing a question here. Does a private promoter need permission from their federation prior to hosting an event? So with this now, um, a private promoter, once they're cert e learning certified and they go into the event maker and they create e an event, they will get approved from FIBA. So like I mentioned, um, the federation specifically um, can't stop them, but it, it's for them to report irregularities about that uh, private promoter on what they are doing in terms of this promoter is, I'm just going to say is a crook. Um, they're not paying or what's not. It is for, you would have to, to report them, and provide evidence that this reporter, I'm sorry, this, this promoter should not be hosting events. Um, I have another question. How can federations or promoters collaborate on develop, developing the sport? Um, that would be specific to your territory. Um, we encourage it. Um, work with your private promoters and your, your, um, your private organizers to, to execute or to activate these events. Um, sometimes the federation may not be in the best, promote, the best position, but it's for you to one, endorse it or to, um, to collaborate with them to execute these events so that the Federation can also get um, credit or kudos for um, completion of that event. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, Barnett, yes. a question. You can go ahead. Hello, my name is Ernesto Urbina. I'm from Mexico. Uh, I have a very particular question about, about the federation. Uh, does, uh, does the trouble that Ademeva had with the FIBA, it's a trouble for the particular promoters about the realization of the 3x3 events? Um, can you be a little bit more specific? What um what um what was the issue? Okay, that's uh, that's about um, about the participation in the international in the international events. Okay. I am. Um, what, what I'm going to say is that. Uh, Solo TV84, I'm your gracious little Solomon Jones. And I can I um, Right, which is a panel that is hosted by Donovan Sharp on his channel with six fantastic other YouTubers. Shout out to Donovan Sharp. And there was a 19 year old who had a question about what he can do to have a happy. Okay, um, 
like I was saying, um, I can't specifically comment on that specific um, situation with Mexico. Um, this particular um, platform here is just to look at the e-learning platform. Um, this is something that, um, one, you would have to speak directly with your national federation on this. And if that further needs clarification, well, then you would have to escalate it through the America's regional office. Maybe it's, it's more about the the available the availability to to the training to the e training with the private promoters. What what are they are restricting access to the to the e learning uh, platform to private promoters? No, 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 no. Actually, when I made the exam on april i get the code from uh from the pro pre principal promoter from Ademeva here in mexico but if other promoters want to make the exam what can they do well well now it's it's on the um is now on the fiba e-learning platform so there's no more codes or, or vouchers that are needed. All you need is your play credentials. Once you request okay. that to headquarters, they will be able to gain access. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Patrick, Derek. Yes, Derek. Derek, Hello. Go ahead, Derek. Oh, sir. Let me ask. Um, let's say I'm a promoter, a certified promoter, and I want to take an event to a country that's not been certified. How does that? Is it possible to do that? You, to do you a, have to, you an event? Have to Yes, you would have to um, work with that ter that territory that you were trying to go into to promote, because ultimately they are the governing body for sport in that country. So it's not like you can um, go into. Um, I know you're from Dominica. You can just go to Trinidad and host host an event. Um, that falls um, solely in the jurisdiction of the Trinidad or the host country that you're trying to go to in allowing you to um, host an event? Um, what about, you just said earlier on, only 12 countries that certify. What about if a country has not certified that you want to take it into as a promoter? Oh, there, there's nothing wrong with that, is that if the country isn't certified, they will not be deemed eligible to participate in FIBA um, 3x3 national team events. So you can hold as many uh, tournaments that you have if um, their back end um, resource is not certified, then that federation is not recertified, is not certified. Okay, thanks. Patrick. Go ahead. Yeah, several here, Kirks and Kekas. Um, we are um, we're having plans basically to get the um, the high schools um, involved in the um, to roll out our youth um, three and three um, program. Um, this is a good way because I have about two or three persons actively involved in the course. The question I wanted to ask is that in is it advisable for us to, um, because to get the, um, you know, get onto the FIBA, um, the platform for us before we do that, or we can just um, do some, um, have some train three tournaments, because I know the more tournaments that you have and the more um, tournaments that you play, okay, it enables you to, um, to qualify. And those programs, those um, tournaments can be, uh, FIBA sanctioned tournaments? 
Yes, I, I would recommend um, for you to get certified as soon as possible. Um, you can do it in tandem of hosting events, but like I tell everyone, it's the more players that you have registered in the platform, the more events that you register in the platform, what that does, it, it's more events equals more points. More points equals higher rankings. So it is always good for you to have all of your registration and your, your compliance in order. So going down the line, you don't have any issues that, oh, I have been you know, registering my events, but guess what? You haven't taken the e-learning certification. So that doesn't, you know, there's no, there's no way of, because I've had X amount of tournaments, um, eliminates me from the e-learning platform. Um, certification. You have to complete that before your federation can be deemed um, <clears throat> an eligible federation for FIBA 3x3 national team events. Okay, so if we have, um, so in order, let's say for example, CBC, Kukaba, uh, one of those regions, they have um, a 3 and 3 tournament. In order to um, access or participate in that tournament, your players would have had to be actively involved in um, your national federation three and three um, FIBA endorsed tournament locally. So Correct. To, to get points. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, thank um, you. Okay, I'm just going to go to the chat. There's a question. Um, at schools, from which grade is better to introduce bas uh, three x three? Um, I would say it's. Um, as early as possible, the same grade that you um, that you introduce regular uh, basketball, I think three x three would be an easier um, platform for you to set up or easy category because of the smaller amount of players, and you only need one uh, one basket half of a court, so it's it's easier for you to activate three x three than um, five on five. But we're not taking away from five on five. 3x3 can be a grassroots introduction to sports um, so that we just don't, you know, we don't have to have 10 players to play. We can just have six. Um, so it would be, um, I would say as, as early as they can shoot, they can shoot a ball. You know, I've, I've had my, my, both my son and my daughter been shooting hoops since they were about three. Um, so it is all about um, personal preference and also what is the culture in your country? I know, um, we were in Caribbean and, and Central America, so I know football or soccer is king. Um, you know, one of the goals to get uh, basketball to be number one is to having our youth players playing as early as possible. I hope that answers your question. <clears throat> Good night, Patrick. Good night. Hi, it's Rondell from Pineda. Hi. Um, hi. Earlier in your presentation, mm -hmm. You mentioned that November is the cutoff period for certification. Did I hear correct correctly? November this year for this particular certification? No. Um, November is the cutoff for um, for national federations being eligible for FIBA 3x3 national team events. And part of the eligibility criteria is to be e-learning certified that means that yes you would need to be e-learning certified um, prior to november 1st okay and that is and one of the members within the federation who has back in access right got that and one of the other criterion is that uh three competition need need to be um set up three separate competitions Yes, the, that is um, that is one of the requirements. As you go into the knowledge, um, when you go through all ten modules of that of the knowledge within the platform, um, they will they will specify all of the details that you need, how many competitions you need to have by a specific date, um, uh, players that are eligible for the national team, how many competitions they need to um, to be part of also so there's a number of uh 
I just don't want to give away um, the, the, the exam answer questions. Uh, because <laughs> what you're asking is an exam answer question. <laughs> okay. okay, then. Thank you, man. <clears throat> Any additional questions? Um, yes, this, this document um, and the recording will be posted on uh, the, the Constant Capital Learning um, platform. I'm just going to put it in the chat. Um, Yes, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to access the information. Um, yes, you said um, there's a question here. It says, uh, can we get the videos to promote our event? Um, <clears throat> yes. If you go to the Fever 3x3 YouTube channel, all of these videos are available um, that you can use to um, help promote the sport. Um, I have access to the English. Um, there are also Spanish versions of uh, these videos that you can also use to help promote it in your country also. Um, there are all of the rule videos. Um, there's also um, the Spanish language for that also. So this is something all of these resources are available for you to promote this vote. Good night again, Leona from Guyana. A question, Mr. Haynes. Um, I know it's recommended that we have at least three tournaments to be um, certified. However, with here in Guyana, with us having, um, with the pandemic and us have not having the, um, being able to play, uh, how would we treat that? Well, it's, um it is a pandemic. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, FIBA had um, initially froze the, the rankings. Um, I think we have started to open up slowly because they have produced um, information on how to start back to play. Um, but <clears throat> I'm going to encourage you to adhere to all your local health authorities in terms of when it is okay to resume play. Um, so, you know, coming into November, having those three activities, um, uh, you would not or may not have, have had them. So you would not be eligible for a national, a FIBA 3X3 national team event uh, because you would have not um, been able to host those many um, events. Um, in the interim, I encourage everyone to uh, be part of the, the the e-learning experience of getting certified, getting all of the things ready. So when we resume play, um, we are ready to go. Uh, and that is why we are hosting a series of these events um, from different um, aspects of the game. So it, this is more of a reset uh, period is that when we're ready to go, we're all, all caught up on the rules, regulations, certif certifications, everything. And this would not be a showstopper. But as for country to country, um, we have to adhere with the health authorities on when we can resume in each of our different countries. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes. You take a, you make a mistake with the link. Concecaba with the link learning center. Oh, Okay, that, right, Thank you for that. 
I've just corrected it in the chat. Um, if there are no additional questions, I would like to thank you for your time. I would like to thank our interpreter jury for um, providing the service to our um, Spanish speaking friends. Um, and we didn't have to do this in um, two sessions. Um, the Constant Cabo Executive for allowing me to do this and um, spreading the word um, of 3x3. With that saying, I will post the recording later tonight to the website. I would like to thank you and have a good night.